We're going to talk about something of which gave him quite acclaim early on in his professional career. It's a book entitled Betrayal, the untold story of Kurt Waldheim, investigation and cover-up, Eli Rosenbaum, uh, with William Hoffer. And suddenly we were at a big meeting in Jerusalem in January of 1986. Uh, a meeting held, I think, every four years in which the leadership of Jewish communities all over the world gather under the World Jewish Congress umbrella. Uh, and while I was there, uh, one of the Austrian Jewish community representatives told my then boss, Israel Singer, there was something not entirely right in Kurt Waldheim's uh, war record. So Singer comes to me knowing I had investigated Nazi cases before, and he says, I want you to go to Austria. And he tells me why. And I have to say, great Nazi hunter that I am, I said, basically, you gotta be kidding me. For 10 years, he was in the media capital of the world, New York City, as Secretary General of the United Nations, the self-proclaimed human rights, um, what do you call it? Human right, chief human rights officer of the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me, and I vaguely remembered that some questions had been raised about his military record because he was open about having served in the German army in the war. Uh, I said, you're telling me that Nobody, if there was something there and nobody figured it out in Manhattan, I don't believe it. He said, well, whether you believe it or not, you're going to Vienna. I mean, there were a number of major themes. I think the most important, uh, well, maybe even most important, is, is what it was that Waldheim had actually done during the war. Since the revelations uh, came out in pieces, we, we actually, at the World Jewish Congress, thought as soon as we exposed the fact that he was covering up a Nazi past, that he had been photographed at the... Um, Podgorica Yugoslavia airstrip in 19, May 1943 in the company of war criminals in the middle of a, 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 a mass atrocity, uh, that that would be the end of it. He would withdraw his candidacy and, you know, his story, we'd leave it to historians to figure out the fullness of his, his war record if possible. It wasn't. And we were forced to keep investigating and as we found evidence, we were releasing it. As it was, and that, combined with the fact that no newspaper in the world um, and I think this is to their shame, uh, assigned a reporter to stick with this story. So you, like a Woodward or a Bernstein, uh, so that you had any kind of cadre of journalists, even one journalist, who had a, a full grasp of, of the evidence that had been released. Um, it, it required someone to sit down and write it up to leave a record for the world of, of what Waldheim had done so far as the evidence permits us to, to establish that. The other big themes, I, I think, of the book were, um, uh, and in a way most, most shocking, that uh, while they were defending their candidate, the Austrian People's Party ran uh, the first openly anti-Semitic election campaign uh, uh, run in, uh, in Europe uh, since the Nazi party of Germany had done that in the 1930s and shocked the world. Mm -hmm. Now the OVP was reviving that, shall we say, tradition. Uh, another major theme was the uh, uh, discovery that the Yugoslavs uh, and the Soviets knew a great deal about what Waldheim had done during the war, but had covered up for him. Uh, they found it very useful to have a UN Secretary General uh, against whom they had compromising information. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably the major reason for that was that uh, during the, um, the 70s, uh, at least, uh, New York City was the principal espionage base for the Soviet Union uh, and presumably for the Yugoslavs as well. And the way they did this was, although diplomats accredited to the Soviet embassy were limited to a fairly narrow um, mileage range of New York City in their travels. If you were a foreign national employed at the United Nations, you could freely travel around the United States. So the Soviets had a plan to increase dramatically the number of Soviet nationals uh, and other East Bloc nationals employed as UN employees. And that had, Waldheim went along with that. And as UN employees, all they had to do was call in sick. They called in sick a lot and get on a plane and go over where, wherever they wanted to spy on whatever they cared to spy on. Uh, so I think um, they got good, good value for their investment in Waldheim. So your book came out in 1993. Uh, 1994, Waldheim gets a papal award from the Vatican. Do you get that? 
I mean, did, did you? I mean, uh, did you understand why? And I, as you might imagine, I don't get a vote on these things. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't see that 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 changing anytime soon. Uh, look, uh, while he was UN Secretary General, he 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 did some noble things in the cause of human rights, and maybe that's what it was for. Obviously, I would not have given him an award. Uh, I, I also would have been mindful of of his conduct uh, during the uh, uh, Czech uprising when. As foreign minister, he made sure that the Austrian embassy's doors were closed to people trying to escape the communists. But someone else has to answer that question. Uh, postscript to the book, what would you write? I would say, um, again, a great question, a postscript, that the world has kind of a short memory. There don't seem to be, I mean, younger people today don't know anything of this story, even though it really was arguably the greatest Nazi scandal of the post-war, of post-war history. Uh, someone who is involved in Nazi crimes against humanity rises to become Secretary General of the United Nations, despite the fact, among other things, that he had been listed by the United Nations War Crimes Commission as a mass murder suspect who should be immediately apprehended. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad that the world has such a short memory. I'm, I'm glad that I, I wrote a book, so uh, the case as it existed then is, is, is recorded, at least for as long as people will read books. I would um, you know, tell personal stories that uh, were surprising to me. I closed the book, for instance, with the story of how um, when uh, we launched, gosh, which was the one, which, which space, piece was that, that we sent it to, uh, was it Voyager? That we launched into space to go out forever into space until some f alien civilization might intercept it. Uh, this was during the, I believe, Nixon administration. Mm -hmm. And it has on it uh, digital, I think, and other representations of Earth. What our planet looks like, what our music is like, what we sound like when we speak our various languages. Um, a noble idea, you know. Uh, uh, Kurt Waldheim had basically pressed the White House uh, and persuaded them to allow uh, his voice to be on that space vehicle. And so he speaks in his heavily German accented English, you know, as the overall representative of the planet Earth. Uh, he maybe even have said, we come in peace or something. Um, that may be enough to convince some alien uh, civilization that, uh-oh, we're a warlike uh, planet, better destroy us. You're an amazing guy. And so are you. And it's, it's always uh, an honor, uh, you know, to uh, uh, have any interaction with the Robert H. Jackson Center, you know, like so many millions of people here and abroad. I'm a huge admirer of the late Justice Jackson especially proud of the fact that before he was Justice Jackson, before he was Nuremberg Prosecutor Jackson, he was the Attorney General of our agency. Um, probably the most highly regarded Attorney General we ever had, as he's the most highly regarded Supreme Court Justice most people would say we've ever had. Uh, and as I said when I spoke today, uh, I think his legacy uh, looms ever larger. Uh, it's so important that his example of judging cases um, as Lieutenant Governor Lundeen said at last night's Jackson Society dinner, deciding cases on their merits rather than on the basis of ideology or political preference, that that model be more closely followed by judges from coast to coast in this country. I mean, at a time when the public, um, all the polls tell us, is, is losing confidence uh, in, in every branch of government, the executive branch in which I serve, the judiciary, uh, and, and and the legislature. We all have to do a better job. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.